Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us in worship today. Uh, I'm glad that you're able to, to join us, and uh, uh, I hope that we are coming to the end of not being able to have services at the church. Um, so be listening in this coming week for our plan for what it is that we're going to do and how, how we're going to start having services here at the church again. We don't have that all worked out exactly yet, but we're getting close. Um, so uh, just keep, keep checking with us and finding out what's, what's going on. Happy Mother's Day. I hope uh, that, ladies, you have a wonderful day um, and that you feel celebrated. Um, remember to, to join us Wednesday night for Bible study at 6.30. Radiate is tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, CR is Thursday night at 6.30. And uh, you can tune into that. And uh, that's what we've got going on. Thank you for continuing to join us in worship. God bless you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to come together and worship. I'm so thankful that during these last 10 weeks now, some of us have been worshiping at home. Sounds so crazy to think two months of worshiping at home, but you are still there. You are with us, and we have, we have been through some storms, but we know that you are the one that gives peace to those storms and peace in those storms. And Lord, I ask that you would be with each and every one of us as we lift your name up, that our worship would rise like incense under your nostrils and that we would feel your presence right where we are. Lord, I ask that you would prepare the hearts and minds of everyone that is watching this, that they would receive what you would have them to receive, that they would feel your presence, they would feel your spirit, that you would overwhelm them with your peace. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the musicians. We thank you for everyone that is here making this possible. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory for the wisdom and the desire in each and every one of our hearts. We love you, Jesus. You are welcome in our praise. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is
God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you so much for all the blessings you have given us. Lord, we thank you for being a God full of love, full of mercy, full of grace. You're an amazing God, a holy God, a God full of glory. Lord, as, uh, as, as we are, are still in this pandemic, uh, I can't help but to remember or think about some of the times that, uh, so many times that I've heard Second Chronicles being uh, spoken, being spoken about how if we, your people, will, will confess our sins and, and, and seek your face, that you will heal our land. And Lord, so many times we concentrate on that healing of our land where we should be concentrating on seeking your face, which really means seeking your presence, seeking your presence, Father. And that's what we want to do today is we want your presence. We want your Holy, your Holy Spirit to, to fully fill our homes, fill this sanctuary, fill our hearts, Lord, and allow we allow that Holy Spirit to teach us today. Lord, I pray that you would be with Pastor Jerry as, as he uh, speaks your word. And Lord, I pray that you would be with each and every single one of us as we receive your word. May it not just fall on deaf ears, Lord, but that it would change us and mold us and help us to be your people. Lord, have your way with the rest of this service. And it's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to acknowledge all the women we're blessed to know. We rejoice over you, for your strength, your wisdom, your strong love, and your beautiful faith. Whether today is a celebration for you or a day of quiet reflection and healing, we're thinking of all of you. If you gave birth this year to your first child, our joy overflows and we celebrate with you. If you adopted a child this year or became a foster parent, we rejoice with you and we want to honor you in your commitment to changing the lives of children. If you continue to struggle with infertility, we are hoping with you and holding your hand in prayer. If you are exhausted and feeling underappreciated for all you do for a house full of kids, we applaud you. We love you and we appreciate you more than you can ever imagine. And if you lost a child this year to death or miscarriage, we weep and mourn with you. And if your child is lost to addiction or to the world, we hurt with you and we join you in putting our hope in the one who brings prodigals home. If you live with painful memories of your mom, we pray that you will find in a spiritual mother all that you never had from a birth mom. And if you're one of those amazing spiritual moms, we thank you for stepping up and being there when others couldn't. If you're experiencing an empty nest for the first time this year, we walk with you in this new season and are excited about the next chapter God has planned for you. If you're single, we celebrate your strength beauty and individuality, and join with you in praying for the desires of your heart. If you're a single mom and wonder if you have the physical energy and financial resources to raise and provide for your child or children, we want to help you, and we will. And if you're pregnant for the first time, we prayerfully anticipate with you the joyful birth of a healthy child. And to all the special women on this Mother's Day, rest and delight in knowing that we are thankful for you and we celebrate each and every one of you. Well, good morning again. Happy Mother's Day. Um, this is going to be a strange Mother's Day. Easter was a little bit different. Uh, Mother's Day is a little bit different. I'm hoping by the 4th of July we're, we're, it's not different. 
Uh, I'm hoping we're, we're back uh, closer to being able to be together all the time and not have to worry so much about uh, the social distancing. But we'll, we'll see what lays in store. Uh, I really miss you guys. I miss all of you. In fact, that is what the sermon is today. The title is, I Really Miss You All. Um, and yes, we are continuing through with 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2. This was what we're in today, verses 17 to 20. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to all the ladies of our church. Um, you have been and are a great blessing to me. Uh, I not only have a great mother and a great wife, uh, there are a great group of ladies who are a part of our church family. And I know you're different ages, you have different experiences. Some of you have children, some of you don't, uh, but you are all important to me and to us. Uh, I know that for many of you, this time of isolation has been particularly difficult. And uh, with us still having to practice the social distancing today, I know that today may be a difficult day for you. Uh, Paul knew the kind of struggle that we've been going through. He deeply and genuinely missed the people of the church in Thessalonica. He longed to see him again, just like we longed to see our friends and family again in person. Um, my son came to the house the other day, and, uh, you know, I really wanted to hug him. But I didn't. We, we kept our distance. We ate lunch together. He was on one end of the table. I was on the other, um, trying to keep our distance. But uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to hug you and be hugged by you, to see each other, to shake hands, uh, to put a hand on your shoulder or put your hand on my shoulder and be able to pray for each other. Uh, I long for that. Here's what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. But brothers, when we were torn away from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly, I, Paul, did, and I would say I, Jerry, did, again and again, but Satan stopped us. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Part of our mutual affection is because we want the same things. Uh, we as as brothers and sisters in the Lord, as part of the church of Jesus Christ, as those who have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are headed in the same direction. Our, our faces are pointed in the same direction. Our hearts long for the same thing. We have been praying for revival and awakening, and I believe that God is doing that, and I believe that part of this whole uh, pandemic and the isolation is God giving us the opportunity again to experience his presence and to, and to have revival and renewal and awakening. Our, our mutual affection, our love for one another is in part because we love Jesus. We love Jesus, so we love each other. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, Peter says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, see that you have sincere love for the brothers. Love one another deeply from your heart. See, when we fall in love with Jesus Christ, we fall in love with Jesus' people too. Uh, you know, I, I, am, I am trying to encourage us to be the kind of people that when they see us, when they interact with, with us, when people out in the world who don't know Jesus uh, have conversation with us, that there's something about us that makes them want to know Jesus. I know and I remember a time in, in, in our history when um, Christians were thought of as judgmental and critical. Um, I remember 
talking with some people that said, you know, they could really like Jesus if it wasn't for his people. Um, I don't want that to be the case with us. I want us to love people really well, to love one another really well, uh, so that Jesus can shine through that. Paul, or Peter said, now that you've purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for the brothers. The work that the Holy Spirit wants to do in us is filling us up with the love of God so that we can love one another. Now, you've heard me say it before. Um, some of you, some of us are a little odd. And uh, we have our idiosyncrasies. We have our, our little uh, uh, things that can grate on one another, and that happens, right? It happens in families. It happens in the church. But by the grace of God, we love one another. Even when we disagree with each other, we love one another. Even when we have a, di a, a dispute among us, we dispute in love. We love one another. We talk together. We pray together, and we resolve issues because the love of God is in us, and the love of God is the love that reconciles us to himself. Even when we were enemies of God, he loved us and died for us, and so we love one another. Another uh, thing that we have in common that, that gives us our mutual affection is that we want to stand firm in the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, Paul writes there, he says, therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. So he calls them dear friends. He calls them my joy and crown. And he says, this is how you should stand firm. Now, to know what this is, we've got to go back into chapter three of Philippians. So what he says there is that we don't trust the stuff of this world. That, that is not what our relationship with God is built on. Our, our relationship with God and with each other isn't based on the fact that God keeps doing what we want him to do. No, that's, that's not worshiping God. That's trying to use God, not be in relationship with God. So we don't trust the stuff of this world. In Philippians chapter three, Paul explains it like this in verses eight and nine. He says, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Paul says, you know, that he... he could have claimed all kinds of reasons to be a righteous person. His, his Jewish heritage, uh, the fact that he was of the tribe of Benjamin, the fact that he was a Pharisee of the strictest sect of Judaism, that, that he, he strived harder than anybody else to do the will of God. And in doing that, he killed Christians, believers. He persecuted them until God got a hold of his heart and turned things around. And now he says, all of that stuff, you know, we could say it today, you know, my money, my power, my education, my, my good looks, my charm, my, my friends, my reputation, all of that, Paul would say, I consider as rubbish that I may be found in Christ. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. We aren't trusting the stuff of this world. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, and we're going to stand firm not by putting our trust and pursuing the things of this world. We're going to stand firm because we pursue Jesus Christ. We, we are chasing after him just as he has chased after us, and that's part of the reason we love each other, isn't it? 
Our hearts are turned towards Jesus. Our goal, our desire, our drive is to know Christ better, to be in a more intimate relationship with him, to to soak up the things of God and to be the spiritual, godly people that Jesus Christ made us to be. We pursue Jesus Christ. So again, in Philippians chapter three, this time verses 10 and 11, Paul says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain from the resurrection of the dead. Paul says, that's my goal. I want to know Christ. I know I want to know him. I want to know him as a person. I want to know his mind. I want to know his heart. I want to know his passions. I want to know his will. I, I, I want to be in intimate relationship with Jesus where I am able to have the mind of Christ, where I see people the way Jesus sees them, where, where I long for people to come into relationship with God, just like Jesus longs for them too, where, where I long to be a blessing to my brothers and sisters, where, where I long to be Christ to the people around us so that they can see him and his goodness. I want to know Christ. And Paul goes on and says, and the power of his resurrection. I, know, I want to know what it is to be risen with Christ, not just someday in the future when the final resurrection happens and we all get to go home with heaven, but I want to know what it's like to live a resurrection life right now. I want to know what it's like to live in the power of the Holy Spirit and to walk in the power of life right here, right now, this moment with my family, with my friends going through this pandemic together. I want to know what it's like to live a resurrected life with Jesus and to share in in the fellowship of his sufferings, to be able to, to serve and love and give in a sacrificial way so that other people can see Jesus Christ. And Paul even goes so far as saying, and becoming like him in his death so that somehow then we're able to attain to the resurrection from the dead. So we have this mutual affection. We love one another because we love Jesus Christ. We want the same things. So we love each other. We stand firm. We aren't pursuing the stuff of this world as much as we are pursuing Jesus Christ. Paul, a couple of times in his letter here, 1 Thessalonians, uh, talks about his relationship with them as a parent as if he were a parent. Um, and just like a parent, he, he rejoiced in their faithfulness. He, he celebrates their love for God and the, the kind of intimacy that they are, are growing into in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul tells them that he's proud of them, that as, as, a, as a father, he's proud of who they're becoming, of the kind of man and the kind of woman that they are. He celebrated their victory and wept at their struggles, just like a parent, just like we celebrate our children's victories and we weep at their, at their failures and their, their hurts. We, Paul weeped and rejoiced with the people in Thessalonica, and he longed to see them. I, I do the same thing with you guys. I rejoice in your faithfulness. Even in the midst of the social isolation, you're praying, you're spending time in the word, you're worshiping God, you're loving the people around you, you're, you're calling the other people in your family groups, you're, you're checking on folks, you're, you're, you're posting encouraging things on social media, you're, you're being faithful to God in the midst of this time, you, and I'm proud of you. I, I am proud of the kind of church that God is making us into. I, I am proud of the, of the faithful that is there of your love and support and encouragement. And I celebrate your victories. I celebrate those of you who've been keeping your sobriety during this time of isolation. And I know for some of you it's been a real struggle, but you've gritted it out and you've sought the face of the Lord and you have been victorious. And for those of you who maybe can't say that you've been victorious, I grieve with you over that failure, and I know that God's got forgiveness and acceptance and that we can just get back up and start moving on with him. 
And I certainly long to see you again. For us to be able to worship together, to pray together, to hear the word together, to be together, to have our our Wednesday night meals again, to be able to to sit and celebrate recovery and and worship and work on on taking the the 12 steps and and getting better in our relationship with the Lord, to be able to have Bible study together and, and be able to have that interaction where we can talk back and forth. I long for the times when we get to see each other again. So on this Mother's Day, let's support each other as we long to be together again. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for what God is doing in you and through you. Let's pray. So dear Heavenly Father, we we thank you for this day. A day when we not only worship and celebrate you, Lord, but we celebrate the women in our lives. For some of us, we're not going to get to be able to be with our mothers today. Some because our mothers have already gone into heaven. Some because we just, we don't want to risk bringing this virus to them. Um, For some of our mothers, they've spent the last eight weeks with their children and they would really like a break. Um, But Lord, I pray that today would be a day where you are honored and the ladies in our lives are celebrated. Lord, I thank you for the women of this church, for their love, for their support, for their encouragement. Lord, we long for the day when we can be together again. And I really hope that that is in the next week or two. Lord, thank you for loving us how good and gracious you are. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Separated Until the day was gone Sing